and then I turn on the brake and you see the moment that the brake turns on some interesting thing happens the speed actually reduces so it goes from 990 rpm all the way down to the 900 rpm so 100 rpm of reduction but it goes back again automatically to 1000 rpm that it was it's exactly at the moment that the brake gets into the circuit so you see the torque that is consumed by the motor increased from 150 milliamps all the way up to 1.8 amps hi welcome to our channel today in this video i'm gonna show you first of all how actually you can control the speed of your brushless motor using solo mini here so the mini version 2 and then we're going to talk about how is the speed controlling on the load how is the effect of the various gains of the speed controlling in field oriented control like kp and ki and then we're going to talk about the effect of the gains on the behavior of the system and how the variation of the load actually affects it so here as you see in my setup i have a, a permanent magnet synchronous motor or brushless ac motor i have hysteresis brake and solomini v2 over there we have a brake control system here and by increasing or decreasing the amount of current injected to the brake i can increase or decrease the amount of load on the shaft of the motor so basically what we have to do is first of all you need to make sure the setup of your solo mini is correct as i'm going to work in digital mode with solo the only thing that i need to be sure is the switch of closed loop or open loop is actually in closed loop mode so what you can see here is this switch i'm talking about this switch should be on cl which means the solo will be operating on closed loop there are some uh, jumpers that I put here these jumpers if you are operating in digital mode are not important but it's always good to make sure the the jumpers are actually referring to the same thing in analog mode because the first two pins are referring to the motor type so I'm selecting a, a normal PMSM or BLDC motor type that's why I'm putting only the first jumper the second jumper you see here is selecting the speed mode for me so the setup of my solar mini is pretty much this I'm connecting it through a USB cable over there to my PC and using motion terminal I'm going to check all those various things that I told you in various conditions and we're going to see together what we have. So now I go to motion terminal I get connected to my solo I see that the E2 LED is blinking so it means solo is operating in normal condition. After connecting to solo I see motion terminal read all the parameters for me and for instance, in previous videos, I showed you how to actually make sure the torque controller loop of your system is ready and already tuned. In general, Solo auto-tunes the torque controller loop after pressing motor identification. These two gains that you see, current controller KP and current controller KI, are actually tuned after pressing motor identification. So if you don't see these values or they are zero for you, you can press motor identification you see a little bit of vibration in the motor and after reading the parameters you see solo automatically identifies these two for you and i've already tested the torque loop these these gains are used for torque loop and i make sure my torque loop is okay so in this video as i'm gonna just test the speed loop i'm not gonna touch these gains i'm gonna let them be like now the next thing you need to make sure is you've already calibrated your encoder and you found the proper motor wiring based on our tutorial so as i've done that before i know my encoder is already calibrated the calibration values are found and stored in non-volatile memory of soro ready to be used so i'm not going to touch that i'm just going to right away go to digital mode and making sure the feedback control mode is actually in using encoders incremental encoders that's the case i'm having now and the control type remains on a speed because i'm gonna operate in a speed mode so everything is ready the two gains that i'm interested to work with in a speed mode are a speed controller kp and a speed controller ki the kp gain in nutshell in very simple words defines for you how you the controller should react immediately to the changes of the differences between the feedback and the reference so the feedback is what you're 
what the controller is reading from the sensor of the motor here the encoder and the reference is where you want to be for example if you want to go to 1000 rpm that's your reference and controller motor controller here solo measures that difference and kp gain here defines how radically you want to answer back to the to that difference so if that difference is high and you put a high kp here the system might react a bit strong or a bit too much that's why you shouldn't increase this gain a lot and about ki it's a gain that defines how the controller should react over the time so it's kind of slowing down the system a bit and it acts over time so it's, it ha it's acting like a history of the system and if you increase it like kp too much you're gonna destabilize your system so you need to be sure this gain is not too low or too high and today in this video, we're going to see the effect of increasing or decreasing these gains. We're going to see how the behavior of the motor will be under loading condition, under loaded condition, or under, let's say, no load condition. So to start with, I'm going to put two gains that I'm kind of feeling good about. I put 0.1 as the speed control KP and a very much smaller value for KI. Here, I'm going to put 0.5. So after that, everything is ready for me. I can right away ask my motor to go to 1000 rpm before that i'm gonna let the monitoring mode going on and i'm gonna just look at the speed so i'm gonna take away all this extra stuff the speed now is at zero rpm so the motor is not moving i ask the motor to go to 1000 rpm and you see the motor actually did what i asked it so it went to 1000 rpm negative and you see here we have a bit of oscillation so this is due to the the gains that we chose but the motor is dead at 1000 rpm 1002 rpm which is, a, which is a very good accuracy and i can also have a look on the torque so the torque or iq quadrature current that is consumed to reach to this level of speed is nearly 160 milliamps so my my system is moving on i i can change the direction so I went from clockwise to counterclockwise. I can go back. And you see, once I change the direction, the sign of the IQ also changes. Now my system is moving and working under no load condition. And uh, it's working great. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the brake while the motor is actually moving so i'm going to do that i turn on the brake and as soon as the brake turns on you see a very interesting phenomenon that is happening what happened is actually this the brake turned on the iq was negative 200 milliamps the iq or the torque that is consumed on the motor went from negative 200 amps to negative almost one amps or let's say 100 milliamps and this is in the case that as you see here i'm having 150 milliamps of current injected into my brake resulting in kind of a 0.15 newton meter on the brake for me so as soon as i started the brake the consumption of the current increased i can change the direction to counterclockwise you see on the other direction also i consume more or less the same amount of torque i go back to this other direction so the speed is kept dead at the reference is 1000 rpm but this time the motor is consuming more let's say current it's injecting more energy into the motor the controller and now i'm gonna gradually increase the torque on the shaft of the brake I'm going to increase it from 150 milliamps going all the way up to 200 milliamps and you'll see the blue plot is actually rising it's increasing the torque is actually increasing on the hysteresis brake but the speed is still the same thing now i'm at 200 milliamps and the consumption of the torque in terms of current is 1.7 amps now but the speed is still 
dead at 1000 RPM. Now, if I change the direction, you'll see the motor went all the way up to the other direction. Again, there 1000 RPM, but the torque that is consumed even on the other direction is again nearly 1.8 amps, similar to the, the reverse direction. So this is actually showing me what happens when you are using high performance motor controller that is operating in closed loop mode. So regardless of increasing or decreasing the load, the speed stays at a certain number. In my case, 1000 RPM. Now I'm going to reduce the load in the other direction. I'm going to reduce it. You see, the load is going down. The blue plot is reducing, but the speed is there at 1000 RPM. So now I'm back at 150 milliamps, but the speed is 1000 RPM. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the brake while the motor is moving and is actually having a fixed speed at a certain speed. So now my moving is 1000 RPM and my brake is off. So I'm going to turn it on all of a sudden in the middle of the movement and we're going to see together what happens. So if you look at this plot, you see that the speed is actually at 1000 RPM. There is a little torque consumed in the motor, nearly 200 milliamps. And then I turn on the brake and you see the moment that the brake turns on, some interesting thing happens. The speed actually reduces. So it goes from 990 RPM all the way down to the 900 RPM, so 100 RPM of reduction, but it goes back again automatically to 1000 RPM that it was. It's exactly at the moment that the brake gets into the circuit. So you see the torque that is consumed by the motor increased from 150 milliamps all the way up to 1.8 amps. And if I let the monitoring going on and I turn off the brake now, so you see, as soon as I turned off the brake, the load went down, I turn it back on, and you see, again, this is what's happening. So this is the point that I turn off the brake, so you see the consumption of the torque, or IQ, went from 1.8 amps all the way back to, again, 0.15, 150 milliamps, but the speed remained the same, more or less. There is a little bit of disturbance here, but you see, the speed remained exactly at 1000 RPM. And then here it goes on till I turn on again the brake. So once the brake turns on, there is a bit of reduction of the speed. So the speed goes down to 900 RPM and then goes back again to 1000 RPM. So you can actually play with this situation. You can reduce this reduction of the speed by increasing your current speed controller gains. For instance, in my case, now I go back to no load condition. So as soon as I go back to no load condition, and if I increase the KP to 0 0.15, when I turn on the load, you see, the speed actually reduced, but this time it reduced a bit less. So this time the minimum value is 923. So previously it was 900 RPM. So it, we could actually make it a bit better, but you know, increasing of the KP has its own consequences that we are going to talk later on in this video. So as you saw, we actually attempted various conditions. We increased the load, we decreased the load, the speed remained the same. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the effect of the KP and KI gains. So now the motor is moving under load. Uh, the monitoring, I let it run. So it's running the monitoring. And I'm going to focus a bit on the speed controlling. So if I change the direction from one, one to the other, you see the motor is moving like this. So it, it it's at 1000 RPM positive, And then it went at minus 1000 rpm the torque has such a shape and if now i increase my ki gain a bit or maybe i go a bit higher and let the system running so now i'm at minus 9 1000 rpm 
I go to the other direction and you see this time once I change the direction I'm having oscillations this is due to increase of the Ki gain too much but the other thing is once your system is running and you are reaching to the reference now I'm very close to the reference if you reduce the Ki too much for example if I reduce it to 10x lower you see actually you drop a bit from the steady state now the steady state was exactly 1000 rpm but when I reduce the Ki I went down because Ki helps us to have zero steady state error so this is the effect of Ki now let's kind of investigate a bit more about the Kp so now I go back to my previous K Ki that I found and it was good which was 005 I'm going to increase the Kp a bit radically to 0 0.5 and you see it became noisy the motor became noisy now the the quality of the control is not like before and if I change the direction you see it's actually moving very noisy it's not good I need to reduce it to 0 0.2 maybe now okay now it went back to the a bit better condition but now when I change the direction so we have a bit of overshoot and a bit of radical movement because now it's much faster the 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 plot it rose very fast then it we have an overshoot and an undershoot so this kind of increase actually is not helping with the with the control because to me the overshoot was a bit high if I let the system running and do the same thing again you see by kp of 0 0.1 the response of the sim is much better you see it's going smoothly down and smoothly up this is a good re response in terms of steady state and also the transient so the transient is not very oscillatory and a steady state is dead at the reference so i hope you could see the effect of the tuning the effect of having load and i hope you subscribe to our channel stay tuned we're going to come up with weekly materials about solo see you soon